Sandra Silverswig was born and raised in Toronto, Canada, where she still lives with her husband and two adult sons. She is what we call a contemporary artist because she is still alive and active in the art world today. Sandra uses a wide variety of lines, shapes, and patterns, as well as bright, vibrant colors in her work. Many of her artworks feature owls, birds, cats, fish, trees, sugar schools, or portraits as her subjects. She is formerly educated in the arts, but is self-taught in painting, for which she is most recognized. Sandra's works are largely reflective of her journey through life with a neurological condition known as synesthesia, which is a crossing of the senses. This means that she may hear colors or see music. Although she states that this condition oftentimes feels like an involuntary sensory overload, she also recognizes that this condition has formed the basis of her art, giving the viewer of her work a glimpse into her vivid, layered, and colorful experiences. Okay, so today we're going to do these additive pinch pots inspired by the artist Sandra Silverswig. Um, she's most well known for her painting, but I would like to use her paintings of abstract faces as inspiration to add details to our artwork. So to begin, we need to start off by making a pinch pot. Um, the first thing you need to do is just sort of press your cube into more of a sphere shape. So I'm going through and just sort of pressing on the corners so my cube starts to be more round. Okay, and then once I start to get it more round, then I can roll either in between the palms of my hand or on my mat, making sure I keep the clay on my mat only. Okay, this looks pretty good. I don't wanna roll it too long. I don't wanna dry out my clay, but once I have a relatively good ball made, then I can find an area where I sort of have a, a crack that I don't like, and that's where I'm going to stick my thumb. Press my, your thumb all the way down into the ball of clay. Don't make a hole in the bottom, but you do want to have a pretty good opening in the ball of clay. Okay, and then this is a, a larger pinch pot. So you wanna make sure that once you start forming it, that you're pressing all the way along the whole side. So it's a pinch pot because we pinch to form it. Pinch, turn, pinch, turn, a little bit at a time. My goal here is to get this an even thickness and to get it about as thick as your pinky. I need to press it a little thinner. And since this is a larger pinch pot, sometimes it helps to start using both hands to form. Okay, this looks pretty good now. You can see it's fairly even all the way around and it's about as thick as my pinky, no thinner than a pencil. If it's too thin, it will break. If it's too thick, it won't dry out in time. A pencil is actually a really good thickness. If you accidentally pinch your clay too thin, um, then don't wad the whole thing up and start over again. You can just sort of squeeze it in, roll it down, press it back together, smooth it out to reform it. But you don't want to wad it up because you don't want to get air bubbles in the clay or dry your clay out too much. Okay, and then once you get done, sometimes if the bottom is not flat, it's nice to gently tap so the bottom is nice and flat. And you can even turn it over upside down and tap so that the top is flat. And this looks good. Okay, and then next we're going to add some details to do some sort of a face on the side of your pinch pot. It's up to you if you want to do a human face or an animal face. And these are abstract, so you can think of very simple shapes like sort of triangles, circles, ovals, and not have to worry about being super realistic. Um, but we want the resemblance of some sort of a face. I'm just gonna start off by pulling off a small piece of my extra clay and rolling it into either a ball or a coil and then pressing it into the shape that I want. Okay, and you'll have a variety of tools where you can draw details or designs. Sometimes I think it's easier to add to your piece before you attach it to your pot.
great. And then remember, you should never be connecting smooth clay to smooth clay. When I fire in the these in the kiln, they shrink a little bit and they'll shrink and pop apart. So we need to do something called scoring or and slipping. Scratch and attach is also an easier way to remember, but score or scratching is making the surface of both pieces rough. And these rough edges will sort of make the clay cling together like Velcro. And then slip, or we're just gonna use a drop of water, makes it a little stickier. And then make sure once you have it scored and slipped or scratched, that you press this on there well enough that if you pull on it, it's not gonna pop right off. So you okay, that's better. And then I'm just going to keep adding. I mentioned a coil earlier. A coil is just when you roll out a very thin, worm-like piece of clay. Okay, this might work well for a nose or an eyebrow or something. Before I press that on there, I need to make sure I scratch. both pieces, one tiny little drop of water, and attach. And it's okay to have things that stick off the top a little bit, but if it's something really, really thin like that, it's very likely going to break. So I might just press that down a little bit. And there we go. It's not going to pull right off. Okay, another thing that you can do is press a flat piece of clay and then just cut out a shape. You've got a variety of tools that sometimes are good to press. And then make sure you scratch before you attach. Okay, very good. And then once you get some sort of a face on here, then I want you to go through and add some texture patterns design. So you can draw, you can press. We have a variety of different types of tools. We have some stamps that have patterns. Okay, this looks good. I have a nice face and lots of interesting textures. When you are done, make sure you clean up. Any extra little pieces of clay, even tiny crumbles, need to go in the trash. Put everything else back where you got it from. Make sure you take a good photograph of this so that you can upload it to seesaw and then bring it back to me and i'm going to write your name and class code on the bottom i cannot wait to see your sandra silverswig inspired face pots have fun